Hello and welcome. I'm Lindsay Crane and these are my retro craft dreams. I've been thinking lately about making some chocolate chip cookies. You know, like mom used to make. Oh. My mom didn't make chocolate chip cookies. She made these like oatmeal chocolate no-bake things that were really good and I used to love like peeling them off the wax paper. But that's not what I want today. I want chocolate chip cookies. Problem is, it's been a while and I keep losing my recipe. Don't ask me why I haven't memorized it yet. It's simple enough, I should have been able to, but I didn't. But I've got the perfect old timey recipe that I will never lose because I can hang it on my wall after I stitch it. Let's have a look at it. Today's kit is mom's favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. It is adapted from an original design by Roger Johnson, kit number 05000 by Simplicity Stitchery. It's not dated, but I'm gonna go with mid 80s on this one. The design could certainly be 70s. It is a trend that started in the 70s, but the, the printing on this one kind of feels mid 80s to me. The nostalgia cycle has always existed and for eras that we are nostalgic for, we're nostalgic for other eras and reinterpreted it then. This old timey vintage signage was probably tied to the Victoriana, Civil War era style trends that came up in the 70s and 80s. You know, things like Little House on the Prairie and Gunny Sacks dresses. And, you know, you see this in uh, Cheers. If you've seen Cheers, you've seen this style. Like, it's it's familiar. I just don't know what to call it. Um, if you know, if you can put a name to this trend, to this style of old-timey signage, please let me know in the comments. Let's, um open her up. We've got our massive hank of yarn we get to sort out. Actually, it's not all yarn. There is yarn and floss. So there's that. And then here we have our pre-printed design. And you just fill in some little bits. It is kind of a bummer. The recipe itself is a little fuzzy. It could stand to have been printed a little more clearly. We need to iron out these 40 year old creases. So we are probably, what are we on, polyester here? Uh, yeah, 100% polyester. While that iron warms up, let's get out the frames. I have my box O frames. If it's not something that's going to be staying in a hoop, I like to use these stretcher bars. You can buy them in a multitude of sizes and make them to whatever size that you need. So let's see what sizes we need. Now we could go, I think that one's a little too big. So that will be perfect for the height. And then for the width, we can open up these. Before I put this away, we need one more tool. I bet my iron is hot, so let's go ahead and iron it. Now these creases are, you know, 30 or 40 years old, so they're probably not going to all come out. I just like to press from both sides and just get it as flat as I can. And then because of the stretcher bars, I won't have to iron it again when I'm finished. For these stretcher bars, I'm just gonna take a short one and a long one. Put them together like so and let's make sure we get the opposing side. So with these frames, um, what you use are these little tacks. This is a little doohickey to remove the tacks. I found online something even better, a set. So here's my little doohickey, um, you know, for removing them. And then there's this. I was so happy to find this. So the one downside to doing this is that um, your thumb can kind of get sore. And this solves that. So we're gonna place our first one 
We're gonna try and center it up and make sure we're centered here and here. And I'm just gonna put one. There we go. And then we're gonna pull this across. I mean, I want it tight. Oh yeah, it has a magnet in it, which I always forget. Okay, we're just gonna go all the way to the corner. Here's one. And we'll fill in in between. Okay, so there's that side. So we're gonna fill in this side and pull it a little bit tighter. It's the first edge, you know, we couldn't pull it too tight because there's nothing to pull against. Let me just see how, how much tension we need. I think we're pretty good. We are doing all right. Now, the other thing that I do, of course, is to wrap and like tape these down. I will do that off camera. Bam. What do we have? We have 100% cruel yarn and cotton floss. What else do we need to know? Heavy black lines on the chart diagram indicate use of three ply black floss. Um, so instructions, instructions, instructions. I will read these in full later, but you know, it's kind of part of the process to see what instructions are included in here. Because some of these vintage kits, especially older ones, may assume a limited knowledge of some of this stuff. We've got finishing instructions. We do have some embroidery stitches. And then of course, the diagram. So what you see here is the amount of stitching that I need to do. To prevent fraying, we suggest that you turn under raw edges half an inch and baste. Oh, that's what I should do. I don't need to tape this. I should like just baste it. It'll take a little longer, but my tape always comes unstuck. And I think that will absolutely make it much nicer. I'm going to go ahead and separate these yarns. I'll baste that up or maybe just whip stitch around it. Um, judging by the amount of black floss on this, I feel like this is going to take me a lot longer than I anticipated. This design incorporates five common embroidery stitches. Satin stitch, long and short, stem stitch, French knots, and a buttonhole stitch. The majority of the work is done in the satin stitch, seen here, and in the stem stitch. Hi. You know I gotta put this back down, right? As mentioned, this kit uses both cruel wool yarn and cotton embroidery floss. The instructions didn't specify how many strands of either fiber to use for most of the different stitches. I started the cruel satin stitches with a single strand, but when I tried two strands I discovered that the fabric weave was such that I could stitch hole to hole, as in cross stitch or needle point, and still have perfect coverage. Similarly, using all six strands of floss gave the same coverage. This made the vertical and horizontal satin stitches quick and satisfying. Everything gets a stem stitch outline. Everything. I am definitely very much over the stem stitch outline. French Knot Town, here I come. You do not want me to stitch to me, do you? So much for my French knots. Now what? Okay, don't. I still can't uh, do my French knots with you there. There we go. 
None. And just like that, he's done and I am covered in fur. getting so close and yet I'm still so far. If I never see a stem stitch again, I will be very glad. We're, we're doing all right. Just, um, you know, a bunch of French knots in here after I outline it, and uh, about 20,000 chocolate chips, and oh, I haven't even started on the lettering. Yep. Oh, there's supposed to be French knots in there too. I'm not sure if I'm about that. All right, that's enough for one night. two and a quarter cups all-purpose flour. One measuring teaspoon baking soda. Half a measuring teaspoon salt. One cup salt and butter or margarine. Half cup sugar. One cup firmly packed brown sugar. Mm. One measuring teaspoon vanilla extract. Two 
large eggs. One 12 ounce package of semi sweet chocolate chips. One cup chopped walnuts or pecans, optional. Here I come. Right in there. All right. All right. Look at mine. Okay, I made cookies. As you can see, this is not actually my first um, piece of artwork in this style. Um, I've actually had that galley sign, uh, bought it at a thrift store in the 90s, in the late 90s. So clearly I've always had a penchant for tacky, delightful things like this. Convention time, it's not actually done. As I have alluded, there is a lot of stem stitch outline in this and I severely underestimated the amount of time that that would take. The chocolate chips alone, I think, took me two nights. And then I didn't even do the lettering. I kind of like it that way. It's not like when these spots were empty and you could tell something was meant to be there. Like, it looks natural that way. Kind of silly that, like, the, the lettering is the whole point of this style of design. But, you know, here's the great thing about being a crafter and an artist you get to decide when it's done and you know i felt done i just i'm okay with it but here's the other delightful thing i can change my mind so to me right now this is a finished object but until i put it in a permanent frame i can always go back and change my mind and add those things in later i will say i'm really glad that i did the outlines as i went along because if I had waited until the very end, I probably would have not wanted to do it at all. And another note, I can absolutely tell why it's all outlined. It's not really necessarily a design choice. It's to cover the uneven edges of the stitches on this fabric, which has an open enough weave that the stitches pull a lot. The, the outline is to cover that. But I will say that it really makes it pop. And if I ever do go back and add more to the piece, like I said, I'm calling this a finished piece, but that doesn't mean I can't add more in the future. <laughs> if I go back and add more, like I'll probably do the letters. Part of me wonders, like it's weird that, you know, they've got outlines over here on that side of the salt shaker, but not on that side. So I kind of, in the beginning of the piece was wanting to outline more. So I don't know, we'll see. I didn't like this so much at the end just because those stitches got a little bit tedious but I really enjoy this piece it you know goes quite well with a certain aesthetic need some brass molds on the wall I can't frame it right now but I am not against just pinning my artwork with thumbtacks to the wall there's nothing wrong with that I don't know I really like it I also really like cookies let me know in the comments, would you hang this in your kitchen? Is it a little too, uh, a little too dorky for you? Or just kitschy enough to still be cute? I don't know. For me, I will totally hang it in a kitchen. Um, I also have no qualms against mixing styles. So, you know, I got my, my brown period. I got my Memphis, like, I got no problem with that. I, I think they look, they, they're just fine together. I don't know. I kind of want more. I'm really happy that my, my galley sign is now no longer an isolated piece of decor. It, it has a friend and everybody needs a friend. Right, Bob? <laughs> so I hope you had some fun 
stitching and baking with me today and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to do all the little clickety things down below so you don't miss it. I'll see you then. Happy crafting! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just the right amount. Crispy and soft. Warm and gooey. I'm Lindsay Crane, and that is an airplane. I had to tape my button on because it popped off right as I was starting to film. I want chocolate chip cookies. I want to mess up just like my forebears did. You can bet some lady in the 80s just didn't know what she was doing either. <gasps> Oops. One less dish to wash. Bye. I need to eat the whole thing right now. Don't eat props. <laughs> There's no props master to yell at me now. Or director. Or stage manager. Mm-hmm. Did you have me?